really popular and quite common in the boxing world at the moment. Uh, and the reason why is because not only does it overload the punching action, but also it helps transfer the strength and speed gains that we have from our squats and our deadlifts to transfer that up the kinetic chain and do it in that punching action as well. So in this section, I'm going to go through the optimal way how to perform a landline plunge, a couple of variations, and different mistakes that I see people make, like either on social media or uh, through, through processions as well that I run here at Czech Army University. So, the optimal way of how I approach boxers, combat athletes, is hand bar, just on the shoulder, and face quite close to the chin. Also, go to split stance. I'll change each side, so it's always to be a hand. So, slight bend of the knee, shoulder, turn towards the lumbar, the attachment on the floor. Basically, go up on the floor and rotate through. Okay, so there's a few different uh, mistakes that people make while doing the landline. One of them is standing quite square on, or doing jabbing. You can do the jabbing motion, but what I want to try and curve is that rotation. That rotation from the lower body through your core, all the way through to your face. If you're doing it too square on, it becomes an arm action, a more like a pushing action. Also, when you're doing a jab, yeah, it's great, it's very pump specific, but you're just going to end up being quite tight here, just working the shoulders. And what you might do is create some imbalances. Because if you're doing your jab, and switch, are you going to switch over to your right, or are you just going to keep that with the backhand? Probably not, okay? So what you're gonna what you've got to do is, is just switch it up and try and get the rotation on both sides. A common mistake that coaches and boxers make while doing landline punches is the amount of reps that they do. So a lot of reps in like targeting strength endurance or doing it as part of a circuit, that's not gonna be as beneficial as targeting, targeting strength and speed. You're gonna get a lot of endurance and strength endurance from your bag, your pad work, and your sparring too. So when you're doing the long line punch, I want you to focus on strength and speed. When I have a beginner on the boxing science program, I start them on around about eight reps, just build that foundational strength to work out that long line punch movement. But most of the boxers on the program either do five reps or three reps, depending on what stage they're on in the program. So the rep ranges as well, this can determine how heavy or how light we go. If we go too light, we're not having too much overload. If we go too heavy, it becomes more of a pushing action rather than a punching action. This is something that I'm going to talk about a little bit later on. So like I said, you want to try and overload uh, the punching action. And if you're going too light, you're not going to create adaptation. Another technique which is a mistake is doing it repeatedly as well. So I'll just show you an example. Alright, you can see there, it's quite hard for me to rotate my hips when I'm going that quick. Also, because it's going down quick, I'm having to push it up rather than when I'm here. All that force is coming from my shoulder. In the mid region, it's quite, uh, you know, for my arms going to be quite soft, so the bar is travelling at optimal speed. I'm going to stiffen up at the top. So, compressor becomes more of a push action, you're not getting the full benefits of what that mind punch can give you. So, like I saying about a punch, uh, it's double peaking activation. Peaking activation from your when it's uh, being delivered from the shoulder. The mid range is your arms will be loose and relaxed, so you can basically fire in your fists as quick as you can and then you stiffen up at the top. So when I'm doing that landmine punch there, I'm really forced to put your force to the floor, force to the shoulder there, it goes nice and loose, and stiffen up at the top. So you can do this through a normal landmine punch, 
Well, there's two other ways that you can do it. Either through a lot man comes through, or a lot man comes with the eyes that we call. So you have three great landmine variations there. You've got the normal uh, landmine punch, the traditional landmine punch, that, which is great to improve that transfer of energy through the kinetic chain. Uh, you've also got the landmine punch through, which has the same benefits, but mainly on the hand speed. And then you've got the landmine punch, or isometric hold, that is great for building effective mass. That's all we've got time for for this episode. So it's unfortunate that I can't answer your questions this week, but I will finish on some really positive news. Boxing Science are going to be visiting different cities around the UK and delivering their coaching workshops. These will be called Ultimate Coaching for Combat Sports. We're going to give you the tools in strength conditioning, fitness training, movement training, core training, and so much more to help you become a better coach to get your athletes fitter, faster, and stronger. That can translate massively to combination punching. So we want a strong, and fast and explosive athlete. We'll make sure that it's done in a controlled, dynamic way.